Sony Santa Monica has done it again. They have delivered a game that is not only a treat to play through, but is also a technical marvel. God of War on the PlayStation 4 quite easily surpasses the likes of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, and Horizon Zero Dawn, two of the most beautiful looking games, and takes the crown for the best looking game of this generation. And yes, we know that's a huge claim, given that there are new titles releasing every month, but among all of the titles we have analyzed for the last many years, this game stands tall. Much like previous AAA PS4 exclusives in recent years, God of War excels in delivering an extremely high quality assets package. Kratos looks eerily close to real life. His armor is extremely well detailed and his muscular body is clearly showing signs of aging. The animation technology implemented here is simply phenomenal. When Kratos talks or moves, the related skeletal systems react accordingly, resulting in the most complex yet realistic animation system we have ever seen. Heck, even Kratos' teeth are superbly detailed. That's attention to detail for you. The game takes place in a Norse setting, so from an artistic standpoint, a lot of things have been changed. Most of the environments you travel to in the game is filled with life, flora, and fauna, but what makes the world stand out is its amazing lighting system. It's quite evident that the developers are using the game's lighting system to accordingly create an atmosphere which is either lively, dark, or dangerous to the player. Implementing a full physical-based rendering pipeline, the physical-based lighting dynamically reacts according to the types of objects it's interacting with. Earlier games in the series had kind of a one-dimensional look and feel to them, which worked really well back then, but with the latest iteration, every environment the player comes across is different and has its own sets of challenges. So whether it's the phenomenal dynamic snow effects or wet environments, all of them look amazing thanks to some really aggressive anisotropic filtering, object displacement, and parallax occlusion. I also want to take a moment and talk about the water effects in the game. Look, most of the exploration you do in the game is through sprinting around, but there is also a boat you can hop around to reach different areas. And the water effects during these moments is simply special. Now, this is no Sea of Thieves, and the game doesn't intend to deliver that kind of immersion, but what is here simply looks amazing thanks to the lighting model. I also wanted to briefly talk about the conversational tech while you're traveling in the boat. Kratos and his son will at times engage in conversations, but if the player docks the boat before the conversation fully ends, the character who is speaking will end the conversation in a natural way. And when you're back on the boat later, the characters will resume the conversation again in a way that seems authentic. This is a very minor feature, but adds to the overall immersion factor. Next up is the enemy and bosses. Unfortunately, we can't go in depth here, but what we can say is that the game has perhaps one of the most colorful cast of enemies and bosses you will ever face. The boss's assets use high resolution textures along with full skin shader support. The game uses a ton of particle effects to deliver some of the most authentic fire, ice, and electric effects you will ever see in a video game. And when you have a ton of enemies all attacking you at once, the visual effects on offer can be a sight to behold. The game's framework also uses a rather interesting destruction engine, which can be seen in one of the earlier boss fights. Now, it's not completely dynamic like Frostbite, but what is here definitely seems intriguing. There are also complex physics processes at work, especially related to the Leviathan Axe that Kratos carries. The axe is not only used for taking down your foes, but also used for solving chest puzzles in rather unique ways. And by the way, Throwing the axe far away and then calling it back only to see it follow the more or less accurate trajectory back to you doesn't get old. As expected, the game comes packed with PS4 Pro support. However, unlike some of the major PS4 releases in the past, this game comes with not only a resolution mode, but also a performance mode. But before we jump into analyzing the PS4 Pro version, we wanted to make it clear that in our analysis, the base PS4 version ran smoothly at 30 frames per second and at 1080p. There were drops here and there, but for the most part, performance was fine. The PS4 Pro, on the other hand, seems like a different story. On a 4K TV, the game runs at a dynamic checkerboard 2160p resolution. Performance, for the most part, seems fine, but at times there were drastic frame rate drops, which made the game completely unplayable for one to two seconds before the engine corrected it back. On performance mode, it seems like the game is targeting higher frame rates up to 60 frames per second, 
The game doesn't really run at a consistent 60 FPS. In fact, performance was so bad in some cases that we had to switch back to resolution mode for smoother gameplay. So overall, and this may be surprising for some players, we preferred the base version as far as performance goes. Of course, we fully expect the developers to patch out the PS4 Pro version, and it's ideally the best version due to the extra bells and whistles it offers, but for now, our preferred platform is the base PS4 version. So, in conclusion, God of War on the PS4 is an incredible effort by the development team at Sony Santa Monica. Not only has it delivered one of the best games of this generation, it managed to surpass our expectations from a technical perspective as well. Back in 2016, we had claimed during our Uncharted 4 analysis that Next Gen doesn't start until Naughty Dog says so. Well, today we say this. Next Gen doesn't start until Sony Santa Monica says so. The ball's in your court, Naughty Dog. Boy. Uh -huh.